Let's talk about Akshon. Akshon is the newest marksman coming to League of Legends, with a playstyle much more reminiscent of an assassin than a conventional marksman. Designed for the mid lane and built to roam, his kit has sparked concerns of being toxic for the game, concerns of giving a champion tons of both burst and sustained damage, as well as a hugely impactful macro warping revive. Fortunately, I'm able to quell some of those concerns. As usual, I got together with my community for a few sessions of testing Akshon, learning all I could from PvE in-houses and supplementing my knowledge with research. As usual, this is not a definitive guide. Please treat this as your Akshon primer to guide your own learning. Akshon's passive gives him the choice between two types of auto-attacks, as well as a three-hit passive. Whenever Akshon fires a basic attack, he can either fire a second shot that deals half damage, or cancel the second shot with a movement command to gain a burst of move speed. The second shot is a luxury in some cases and a necessity in others. It leaves you stationary and vulnerable for a longer period and won't even fire if the target leaves your auto range, but Akshon often needs the damage to close out a kill. Akshon's second shot deals full damage to minions and applies full on hits and reduced crits to everything. Akshon's single shot is excellent for dodging retaliatory skill shots and makes him a lot stickier. The movement speed scales off bonus attack speed. Good decisions around Akshon's passive are critical, as you'll need to know when the damage or move speed is more important, and you'll find yourself missing kills often if you don't. Akshon's 3-hit passive is super simple. Hit 3 times with autos or abilities, deal extra damage, you can start stacking again immediately. If you pop your passive on a champion, you also get a small shield that scales off your AD. This shield has a static cooldown. Akshon's Q is a linear skill shot boomerang that deals damage to everything it hits as it travels out, and again as it returns to Akshon. Unlike other similar abilities like Sivir's Q, the damage of Akshon's Q does not decrease with each target hit, but it always deals reduced damage to non-champions. Every enemy hit extends the maximum range of that cast of Q, and Akshon gains a burst of movement speed if it hits a champion. Simple and effective. Akshon's W puts him into camouflage for a short duration, refreshing if he touches a wall or a bush. I want to emphasize that I do mean touching a wall. The radius for a refresh is very small, while Akshon's detection radius is noticeably larger than other camouflages. Akshon only gains movement speed and mana regeneration during his stealth if he's moving towards a scoundrel. Passively, Akshon marks enemy champions who kill allied champions as a scoundrel. While in stealth, Akshon can see a trail leading towards all scoundrels on the map. If Akshon manages to score a takedown against a scoundrel, he he gains bonus gold, removes scoundrel status from all enemies, and revives all allies killed by that scoundrel. Revived allies spawn in base, and Akshon cannot revive himself through an assist. Akshon's E has him fire a grappling hook at a wall and swing around, firing at nearby enemies. Since this ability takes multiple inputs and feels weird at first, we'll break it down in steps. First cast, Akshon just fires his hook into a wall. If you don't input anything, he'll just stand there. On second cast or on a movement command, Akshan will start swinging in the target direction. While swinging, Akshan fires at the nearest visible enemy. These shots are not auto attacks, but do apply on hits at reduced effectiveness, lifesteal at full effectiveness, and crit for 90% effectiveness. If an enemy champion is marked by Akshan's 3 hit passive, Akshan will prioritize that target. If Akshan collides with a champion or terrain, then he stops swinging. Third cast, and yes, this ability takes three inputs, Akshan leaps to a target location and fires one final shot, allowing you to swing a little further and then dive back into your auto range. E's cooldown is reset on champion takedown. As another weird oddity, Akshan reveals himself during E, so while it's still good in most cases to use your E on the mid lane inhibitor as you go back to lane, your opponents can actually see you doing that. Akshan's R is a channeled ability that locks onto an enemy champion and fires multiple homing shots, the number based on the channel time. His ult bullets can be blocked by almost everything, including minions and structures, but the shots instantly kill minions. Akshan can cast E during his channel or fire, but he only gets E's mobility during R, not its damage. Akshan's ult bullets do almost no damage to full health targets, but they have significant execute damage, especially once you get some items. The bullets can crit and apply lifesteal, both at reduced effectiveness. Since Akshan has a utility W and an ultimate that's effective in most cases only when your opponent can't retaliate, he relies on a few bread and butter combos and knowledge of his ability interactions. Generally, Akshan wants to be swinging around one target to assassinate them. Every Akshan one-shot involves making the most of your kit to set up your swing and follow through appropriately. Akshan needs either a passive mark or an exposed target to confirm his swing target, so in most cases in lane you'd need to land Q first. Make sure the target is actually marked. If you land your third 
third hit on the champion and pop your passive, then they're not considered marked anymore, so your E won't target them. You can cancel your E with Gale Force, but I don't see a lot of value in this since you'll lose damage from your dive shot. Always go for your E dive for extra damage, Q immediately if you haven't used it to start a combo, then make your decision. Use your double auto either if that shot will kill, or if you have a clean ult angle to follow it. Use your single autos if you need to chase down your target a bit longer. In most cases, on an exposed squishy target, you won't need your ult if you have your mythic. This is a visualization of Akshan's combo decision tree. By his nature, Akshan is an all-in oriented champion who relies on picks, so following this flowchart should generally get you far. And here are a few examples of his combos in action. Akshan is a ranged roaming assassin with limited agency in lane due to his inability to take short trades without a major enemy misstep. His early lane phase consists of avoiding interaction outside of his rank 3 Q poke, which he's happy to do since his passive makes it so easy to farm under his turret. His real strength lies in ambush and unfair fights. Around level 5 or on his first back item spike, Akshan becomes very capable of quickly shoving the wave and running to side lanes or helping his jungler terrorize their opponent. Since all of Akshan's power is concentrated in his all-in strength, Akshan becomes much scarier if he can rotate to a crab fight first, or if he's paired with a gank-heavy jungler to wreak havoc on his lane. The reason Akshan's revive is much less game-breaking than it seems is that it's on a champion who has virtually no access to protected targets. The amount of times I actually killed a scoundrel for a revive during my games could be counted on one hand. If Akshan cannot guarantee that his E will hit a specific champion, he cannot kill that champion. He struggles to fight in choke points, the properties of his Q and R don't do him any favors against clumped opponents, and his E will almost always get him killed if used recklessly. Akshan's low auto range and low attack speed ratio make him completely dysfunctional as a marksman in a teamfight. If you're asking Akshan to teamfight, you're asking him to catch stragglers and clean up afterwards. In lane, I was very deliberate about my skill order. Start E, take two points in Q, then put a point in W at level 4. Prioritize Q max, then E, then W. Akshan's rank 1 Q deals 5 damage, which is then further reduced on minions. So starting E gives him the greatest likelihood of contributing positively to any early macro movements or of punishing early enemy mistakes. W is a utility spell that brings no value to lane, so I prioritize making Q worth casting at level 3. While it may be appealing to level W second to get it to a 2 second cooldown, some of its value is always locked behind the presence of scoundrels, and I value the E damage more highly, since at the end of the day, this is an assassin. The primary rune page I ran was a precision sorcery page intended to play into Akshan's marksman-like properties and to augment his laning and roaming capabilities. Akshan's kit procs press the attack quickly and he benefits from its burst damage more than he'd value Conqueror's AD. I opted for PTA over Electrocute because of its higher early game burst damage and its boost to Akshan's execute damage. Choose between Triumph and Presence of Mind, keeping in mind that Akshan doesn't spend too much mana to trade, but he still has costly spells. Round out the page with Legend Bloodline and Coup de Grasse for more efficient assassinations. On the Sorcery page, I took Nullifying Orb whenever appropriate, Nimbus Cloak otherwise, and paired them with Water Walking to compensate for Akshan's lack of a consistent out-of-combat move speed steroid. I imagine Domination Runes could fit into Akshan's pages, but for now I'm expecting Precision Sorcery to be the best combo. Akshan's kit heavily implies that you should build him with low attack speed marksman items. He's got high AD scaling on Q and reasonable ratios on his multi-hitting abilities. Attack speed isn't super valuable, but grants him utility through his single shot move speed and helps him shove more effectively. Most of his abilities interact with crit, lifesteal, and on hits in some way, but it's clear that on hits are weakest. His E, his most important ability, cuts their effectiveness by three quarters, and his low attack speed limits their value. Lethality items should be considered because the only magic damage Akshan deals is on the detonation of his 3-hit passive, but generally his kit does lead you towards crit without zeal items. Is that correct though? 
I'm confident in claiming that Kraken Slayer is by far his best mythic. It's more consistent than Gale Force, more aggressive than Shield Bow, which Akshan needs as an assassin, and can be procced multiple times in one burst combo, even if not at full effectiveness each time. I built a pure AD crit item second, either Bloodthirster or Collector. I personally liked Bloodthirster since Collector is only good for its stats on a champion like Akshan, but those stats are nice, so I'm not sure which is best yet. Berserker's Greaves aren't bad, help Akshan get out of lane faster, and can boost his damage a small amount, but Mobility Boots remain an option. Infinity Edge with a typical defensive marksman closing build worked great for me, but I failed to test Kraken Slayer and Berserker's Greaves into more of an assassin core. Akshan only wants crit because his kit benefits from it, but he's at his best before you can reasonably buy enough crit for the IE payoff. On the other hand, Akshan kind of doesn't need more damage against squishies, and the crit and defensive utility helps him handle slightly more durable targets. I liked the crit build, but we'd be doing a disservice by not testing other things on release. So that's Akshan, the rogue sentinel. This was by far the clunkiest champion I've tested so far. He genuinely felt awful to play in game 1 because his passive and E were so weird to play with, but once you're used to the basics of his mechanics, he feels so fluid and fun. I don't expect Akshan to break the game at all. He has clearly defined strengths and weaknesses, able to kill an isolated target very quickly from a surprising range, but lacking sustained damage and frequently finding himself in situations where going in would be suicide, leaving him unable to access his revives. I'm really looking forward to having him in the game. As always, I'm sure there's something I've missed in my testing, so please report back with everything you discover about Akshan to help us all understand him better. And I hope I can help you swing into action when Akshan releases.